got you tuned up. All on day, the one that fits ya. Can't begin to give you tuned up. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Now Book Club. This month we are discussing His Only Wife by Peace Adzo Medi, and I'm Katasi Kironde. Yes, and I'm Kalun Jiseba and Ake. So His Only Wife follows um, Afi, who lives in a small Ghanaian town and is plucked out of obscurity um, to marry uh, a wealthy Ghanaian by the name of Elikem Ganyo, um, but it appears that Elikem or Eli or Eli is not at the wedding. And as the story develops, it transpires that his family have put together this uh, union as a way to draw him from um, his current uh, partner, who they fear has got this um, unnatural hold onto their son, brother, uh, so on and so forth. Um, you've disappeared or you've just... I'm back, sorry. Okay, all right. So <laughs> yeah, the, story was, the story was too crazy for you. Um, so immediately, what, what, do you, uh, what did you think? Um, immediately, hmm. I was a little reluctant to read it. So I'm like, oh, I just want something a little bit more classical lit and, hmm. you know, um, Something a bit more serious, basically, was my initial reaction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just that, you know, as yeah, just on the basis of what it, it looks like, seemingly like a love story, I'm just like, oh, I just I want something a bit more meaty. However, when I picked it up, I have to say it was an African page turner. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I put I read it in a really short time, and it, coincidentally, the last book read by a Ghanaian was also a page turner, as in Maria Claire. Uma. Amwa. Amwa. Um, so maybe these Ghanaian writers have a little gift, you know? Like, yes. that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read it on holiday and I really enjoyed it. And it was light in terms of it was very accessible, but the themes were very big. You know, they were bold and very daring themes. So I think that um, the balance was actually quite good because the heaviness of like the, the Let's talk about like polygamy, um, gender expectations. It might have all been too much at once, but I think it was it was a really good balance. And I found Afi a little bit irritating at times, but I went on the journey with her. And um, I have to say, when I finished reading the book, I told my husband, you know, sometimes you miss the characters or you miss the thing that you were just so consumed by. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, I think peace got me. Yes. Oh well, well, I I agree with you. As in, it, it was an African page turner. It is an African page turner, and I was surprised at how um, quickly I read it and how um, kind of magnetic it was. Every time I put it down, like I was always looking forward to reading it. And um, the, the last few kind of pages before I finished, because I was reading it on the train journey when I was traveling up and down, and then the last few pages, I was like, oh. Maybe when I came back to my flat, I was thinking, oh, I can't wait until the next train journey to read it. So let me just finish finish it now. So yeah, so that's a good sign of the book, really, uh, of a good book. And in regards to what I expected, yeah, so I, I didn't really expect it, expect me to be so kind of like attached to the characters and really, um, yeah, invested in things um, going well for Afi. Um, but I really was. And also, you know, she really did love him. And although her naivety was a bit frustrating, it's partly to do with just how exposed she was to what could be and what she felt she was deserving of. Um, I think uh, Medie or Medi um, built and created the pre kind of life that um, Afi had really well and the the, the, the people around and she saw her uncle who had many partners and how she didn't want that and she saw how her dad before he passed away you know um was loving uh, seemingly loving to his mo to, to to his wife you know so she really had this expectation of the kind of wife she wanted to be but also the kind of husband she wanted from Elikem. so 
Yeah, what, but why did you find her annoying? Okay, yeah, maybe annoying wasn't the right word, but I guess it was her naivety again that um, made me sometimes, I found grating at times and I don't know, I mean, she was just so oblivious to the fact that she was a pawn in this game that the the Ganyos had created, right? Am I there still? When you, you go, know, you're still there. no, 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 you're still there. Yeah, just her na her, na her naivety was just like, oh my goodness, you're standing really entitled. You know, you got married to this man that wasn't actually there, wasn't present at your wedding, but yet you have all these expectations. Um, so it was kind of ironic, and just on that, that's that, but the opening line of her um, that Medi uses around like her husband was absent at her wedding. It wasn't, it was, it was, it was comedic and shocking, but it was also something that happens so much in our culture. Mm. Does it really? Oh, as in, as in, I feel like in, I know, I know of um, women who've done kwanjulas in Uganda when mm. their husbands are in outside countries or abroad. And then, you know, it's literally, you're literally getting married to a photo. Oh, he's not around. We'll get, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so um it was for those for those that don't know what kwanjula means what what is that oh kwanjula similarly to what um Afi undertook or what they arranged for her as a traditional wedding that happens a ceremony that happens in uganda culture okay i always thought kwanjula was the introduction or was that kuchala In kuchala i feel like kuchala is the is the initiation and then Kwanjula is you're bringing them home. But Kwanjula, as you used to remember, last for like days, seven, like several days. It was a big, it was a big occasion, but now it's been brought down to one. But that's a traditional wedding. But I feel like with with the with the um the introduction of Western and white weddings, it's taken on a new identity as being the introduction and then the white wedding is a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is something that she wanted actually, Afi. Afi wanted, well, actually, not necessarily. It was something that was presented to her by her friend. Evelyn. Um, Ev is it Ev not, not just no. Evelyn, but the other friend, the original friend, um, not Cecilia. I'm trying to struggle to find her name now. Um, oh, quickly, please. Her cousin. It's her cousin, actually. It's not her friend. Who was studying in Cote d'Ivoire. Um, but, yeah, so when the name comes back to us, we'll... Um, We'll we'll be able to, uh, yeah, to 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 talk about her properly. But yeah, so it was something that was kind of presented to her, or maybe was it? I'm trying to. I hope I'm not misremembering it because I remember she kind of wanted it to be official. One of someone within her circle friends wanted her to make it official, and then she presented that to Ellie Kim. But she was like, "Oh, you should go to the registry place and make it official." Um, so maybe it wasn't necessarily that she wanted a white red wedding, but she wanted some sort of officialness about it so she could be his only wife. Mm. Um, is yeah. it Cecilia? C Cecilia is one of, um, is, the w oh. is the wife to, to oh. not to Richard, to Fred. The other brother, yeah. Yeah, I think Ce Cecilia is the, the sister-in-law, I believe. And then the... The, the other sister, um, now I'm trying to remember, y what, Yaya? Was it Yaya? Yeah, that's a Yaya. sister. Was it Yaya? Was that a name? Uh, I think it was Yaya. Um, but yeah, so so it, it, it was, uh, I think, it, it had so many characters, that's the thing. And I think that's one of the, the, the positives about it is that there were so many um, different people that, that, that Afi came across that were giving her all these kind of like life advice. And I wish she she was strong enough to kind of like stand on her own, like she sought out other people's um, um, validation, um, which kind of led to her ma marriage going awry. Because had she, if she hadn't met Evelyn, she would have, I think, lived her life in ignorance. Evelyn was the sly one that ruined everything for her. Mm. Don't you think? I don't know if Evelyn ruined it or Evelyn actually just gave a perspective but just allowed her to just um, just have deeper thoughts and mature and just understand that ironically Evelyn was the other woman as well. Yeah, which which was so 
I know that's why I thought she was a bit um she she was a bit what's the word conniving like because okay granted she didn't want to be with 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 Elikin but I feel like she didn't want um she wanted maybe maybe she wanted Afi to suffer a bit like uh whatever because she was she had it all like Afi kind of did have it all and the only thing that was missing was, was I guess the exclusivity and maybe I don't know for some reason Evelyn just set out to, and even listen spoiler alert if you're oh, watching no 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 but the setup at the end do you think that was coincidence oh, set up that was a set up coincidence about you know oh so it's the last minute we have to get, we have the photographer we have all these people what well, you can't tell them to come back another day that was a set up let's just backtrack maybe maybe that was her own that was the only way she could get revenge on her own situation she was she was like well he you know this is this is her revenge yes because because i'm sure the brothers as well the way they're behaving they they what do you call it um what's the word uh oh, anyway it's slipping my mind but enabling it's not even a big word but they're enabling each other with all of that as well they kind of the gangs were coming together and kind of helping um each other continue this kind of behavior with Richard and and maybe with the exception uh, uh, exception of Fred but we don't know about his situation but I'm sure everyone had some sort of agreement and arrangement that they would have side pieces right um and maybe she just wanted to put an end to that and she just also wanted to stick it to I think because Ellie Kim was the golden child getting to him was the way to get to the mum as well so ruining things for Ellie Kim ruins ruin um ruins the mum as well and she she just I think she did it on purpose because that that was a decent kind of a decent arrangement that young Ellie Kim had and also Afi as well I I, I don't agree with it personally but i think she 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 could have lived a decent life i think and people were telling her she could have so just before i continue your head's chopped off now colin you okay i see you have now okay so let's backtrack i feel like evelyn was inspiring in a way for afi because she was so liberated she was defiant against like you know the mother um so in a, in a way i think she inspired her to want to want more just for her career and other aspects she was you know she was doing all this business and you could see that um Afi was in awe of her and i also feel like she was kind of encouraging her to just take things as they were and she was explaining back for her own situation so i don't know i think this was very well crafted by medi that all the characters had like shadow sides to them you know everyone was somewhat duplicitous and you just no one was just on the street on narrow and and Evelyn is that we could unpack her like she had some good qualities about her that were empowering to Effie and on the other hand like you said maybe she conspired to um dissolve her marriage um but on the subject of wait do you, what do you think about that point around the characters and their complexities yeah yeah the, I, i definitely agree there was uh, a lot of that's why as uh, as part of the not the the point i made was like they brought so much to the story and there was so much going on that I was always intrigued whenever say she went to speak to Evelyn I was like yeah something's going to happen she's going to have a change of heart she's going to be given a different new different insight and then Richard turns up and Richard wasn't fully you know telling it as open as you know we could tell he wasn't really being as open as he should have been um and yeah so I guess they all had different aspirations and everything and so so yeah so I, i agree with that there was a lot of complexity with that yeah and i'm just thinking about what you said around the family and how they were all part of this big lie mm-hmm. um and that's so true to, you know i i know of families who you know a woman gets married who she's got married to a man and then everything is then revealed later but everybody knew all these people were witnesses at your wedding and you and this one this woman doesn't know so it's just this theme around deception and truth and perspective was like a running theme throughout the book um and i think for me what stood out the most was this idea of polygamy and the brothers and early kim's friends just not having the courage maybe it's not courage maybe it's something else to just admit but they wanted to have um you know they wanted to lead polygamous lives mm. 
and and I think like I think that we don't talk about polygamy enough as as Ugandans I would say as as openly but if she had gone in there knowing what to expect and that that's what was on the table it would have been a completely different story um and what else did I want to say about polygamy and I just felt like it was interesting how the traditional wedding afforded him the luxury of having both women and the white wedding that she was pushing for wouldn't. So this conflict between like modernity and tradition was really interesting as well. Mm. But do you think she she wasn't aware of that because she did know there was another woman though. I think her, her big gripe was she was being treated like the side woman, even though she was the one that has married him, has had some sort of marriage arrangement yet she wasn't getting the perks of being a, a married you know being the wife so she, i think i think that yeah the, she knew about the other woman and to a certain degree at the beginning i think she was fine with it thinking it was going to be temporary or you know she was eventually going to be able to be wife number one but i think her discovering that that was never going to be the case was really because she signed up for something completely different had she entered being the evelyn you know knowing that she is the side piece she, I think she could have been, she could have maybe handled that, but because she was sold the lie of being his only wife, um, she kind of like just couldn't really rest with that. And um, and then having his child as well and knowing that she's also given him a son, which is something I imagine the mum, uh, uh, Ellie Kem's mum probably wanted a lot as well, because in, in maybe partly to do with like um, an heir and kind of just the imagery around having a son the patriarchy, so, yeah. the patriarchy so yeah so she 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 was just yeah really i think frustrated with that but yeah the, but yeah so what what do you okay. feel that going sorry do you have something to but say then I think that's where the naiv naivety comes from because um how do you know like we, we didn't hear enough about evelyn's story so how do we know she didn't think she was the main woman mm. you know, we, we don't know that like what is true we were only buying into what the Gaio's narrative was and what, what Afi knew. Well, if she was the main woman, would she be locked away in a fancy flat in in Ghana, in Accra, sorry? But how, no, but I mean, if Evelyn, he, he, so Ellie can remove her from the, the main house, but she's got some beachfront property, property still living like she's... Oh, sorry, was Evelyn, Evelyn, Evelyn is the name? No, 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 sorry, Muna. Yeah, Muna. yeah. Sorry, yeah. Muna, I beg your pardon, the Liberian woman, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, like, how do we know that Muna didn't see herself as the first woman, as his only wife? Like, we don't know her story. There was so little written about her. Because because they he never got married to her in whatever, whether it was traditional or white wedding, as far as we're concerned. It, she They just met in Liberia, had a kid. Well, you know, first kid had tragically passed away, but, you know, had a, another uh, kid. So we 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 never saw no wedding. We never heard of it. You know what? I think this idea of like marriage and weddings is like this is, as we know it, is is quite like a Western construct. Again, not to spoil my family, not that there's that many polygamists or whatever, and all these informal marriages. But like as a, I know many uncles or men who've taken a woman into their home. She's had a child, and you're just living like de facto. You mm. know, and you don't need a ceremony to officiate that. So maybe to them that was enough. But. Um, I just think, yeah, she was just very naive and she was just, she bought into this big lie. But I just, I wanted to know more about um, Muna's, Muna's version. Yeah. Um, we'll never know. I think that was it. That was a, maybe it's a good thing, but also frustration at the same time, because just as we meet her, the book ends. Just as, and that, that, that reveal was great. Again, spoiler alert. So um, young Afi, is convinced by Evelyn um, to go um, to a kind of a, a beachfront, whatever, take part in, to help her style, because Afi is a, is a stylist and, you know, fashion designer. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's a fashion designer, but um, so she's convinced by Evelyn to help her um, with a photo shoot. Um, so it's a last minute photo shoot. And while she's there, it, um, we kind of find out that, um, that Evelyn, lives in a nearby um uh, house and she literally goes there to, to apologize for um 
the, the girl Evelyn's daughter being hit or whatever. And that's when, oh man, that, that shock. If it was a film, you could just see it now, you know. Um, yeah, so that's when, as she's speaking to, 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 to this mystery woman, describes her as this beautiful, tall, dark-skinned, model-esque woman. A male voice is heard. And who appears at the doorway? The, the Casanova himself, Elikem Gagnon. And that was just, that was really, really clever the way um, that the writer piece, um, yeah, put that together. I thought it was really, really, really good. But uh, yeah, so just as we, we meet Muna, that's it, that's the end. And I think, it, like you said, it would have been nice to know her story because it seems like it wasn't what we'd been told. Like she wasn't the kind of so-called hideous person that she'd been described. She probably wasn't hideous on the inside or outside as they were all saying, I think they just didn't like her because she stood up to the family and wouldn't let them kind of get away with it. But then it makes me ask the question, why did Ellie like her so much? Like, what was it about? Uh, she, Because she seems to be also non-traditional as a woman as well. She seems to be a little bit like Afi. What drew, drew him to her, beyond the looks maybe? You think Afi's non-traditional? Yeah, non-traditional in that she's not accepting of like oh, the, in the yeah. beginning she is seemingly in the beginning she's and then she evolves into this sort of defiant absolutely yeah in the yeah in the beginning yeah she, but but i think that's partly maybe to do with her age as well and a, a kind of she never she always shared a room with her mom like she hadn't been beyond her small little town so she was very you know uh innocent so so yeah maybe there's something about Ellie and it was I he was frustrating as well because like you could have made a decision bro like but as a dude to bait my life out I know it can be tough to make a choice between you know this beautiful woman and this also beautiful and they all bring different kind of personalities and so not that I've ever done that but I've been told that it, it can be difficult to make that decision <laughs> But the thing about it is, it's important to recognise that there were like all these very strong women involved in, in, I don't know, the puppeteering of like the men. So, you know, you've got the Gayo mother mm. and she's this big character. You've got Afi's mum and you've got Yaya, the sister. Mm. So, I, I mean, as someone, I, I'm curious to hear it from a guy's perspective, like behold that like mothers can have on sons because this was an example of that. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't just making these decisions himself. There mm -hmm. was also the idea of like wealth and like inheritance, you know, that was lingering in the background and appeasing his mother as not, not, not to lose those privileges yeah. um, versus really pursuing his desires. Well, yeah. That landed with you. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, as 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 a guy, like I think your mother is the well should be the the woman you respect the most is the first you know um, access to a woman you have like in your in your whole life. So I think she does have a, a strong hold on you. Tends to have a strong hold on you, and because she's a woman, if she gives you advice around other women or says this woman is no good for uh, uh, no good for you. Sometimes you can end up kind of listening or if she's orchestrating your lifestyle, you can end up kind of like taking that on board because you're thinking, oh, she she must have, you know, the best of interest um, towards me. Why would she do so otherwise? And, you know, similarly with your sisters, whatever. Um, and because he, for some reason, Ellie seemed very kind of like, okay, he was clever, clearly clever, a strong business mind. And he could help them make money and that, like you said, that that had a big impact. But I think he he felt like he had this, this um this, I don't know, responsibility towards his mum, because she'd also done so much for him as well. And you can't really abandon your mum, you know. It, uh, rarely are you gonna hear stories of a dude, you know, being disrespectful, abandoning his mum. So you're not gonna, he's not gonna abandon his mum. But at the same time as well maybe that also played into why he found it hard to abandon you know the mother of his daughter you know um who'd lost a kid as well and then also couldn't abandon afi so he is stuck he's surrounded by a lot of strong women but also kind of 
made him unable to make up his own mind and make make up his own decisions around his life because he'd seen so many maybe he he felt kind of like um tethered to so many different people in particular the women in his in his life um and they all stood up for him like every, his sister stood you know stood up for him his mom and everything he was like the golden child so he struck you struggle with that if he had maybe if the mom wasn't a good mom he would have like kind of like behave differently if the sister be sister maybe if the sister came up to him and said hey this and you're behaving a bit crazy it would have been different because actually similar to this other book you know one world is publishing um you know the botswana book so i've started reading the short stories for that um how was it short story response yeah short yeah call and response um gota la gota wone moeng i think is a, is the name and um there's a short story about a young a girl who finds out that her brother's cheating on her on his wife um and she goes and she tells the wife so she does the opposite of what these women would probably do and just and then that leads to the relationship breaking up and whatever so sometimes yeah if you're if you're the mother or the sister in that situation you might need to not be an enabler so we talked about enabling and if you're the enabler then the guy keeps doing it because like well they're they're letting me do it so it must be okay I don't know. I mean, we're not talking about children here. We're talking about a grown ass man. So I just don't have the same sympathy for him, you know, in a sense that, oh, I'm being tethered here. Like, he wasn't a child. And also, like, what is good? Like, I don't know if Mrs. Gaia was good. I don't know if she was actually a good, good person at her core um, to want to appease. But there was definitely, like, I think she was really smart and Mehdi was really smart in, like, highlighting this emotional hold that existed between them and this dependency because she was controlling the estate by the sounds of it you know and and also if we look at Richard he was also like bending to his mother's wishes and he didn't have any of those other obligations that you described of having a child with Evelyn or whatever he was much more independent but he still was living like under his mother's rule Fred being the only exception, but we didn't get much of an insight into Fred's, Fred's arrangement. But you could see that Cecilia was really like impressive Afi's, um, I don't know, courage to speak out. So I just, I didn't, it's interesting how you connected with it. And I just felt like these men just needed to make a choice. Well, you don't think um, Mrs. Ganyo was a good woman. She literally was the only person willing to support Afi and her mum when they got kicked out of the house. And then after they got kicked out of the house and after the mum sort of started supporting Afi, she changed. It was all it was all part of her, her plan. She was quite manipulative. She was using her wealth and her status mm. to craft out her life because she kind of left Afi's mum stranded at one point. Mm. Yeah, 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 she was. They weren't humble with their wealth, you know, it was definitely like a class struggle. And that's why I feel that they got this poor, humble girl thinking that she would just pander to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, it was still enjoyable. It was still enjoyable mm -hmm. to kind of like read, read all those different dynamics and get exposed to, you know, Ghana life in a different kind of way on the, on the continent Ghana, because when we read... Marie Claire um, Amwe's book that was you know part England and then little bits in Ghana as well um, so it's good to kind of be exposed to that as well and also it's fascinating that the author uh, piece was born in Liberia she was born in Liberia so the Liberian woman um, when she kind of like how sympathetic she was towards her I think maybe her growing up in Liberia was um, had a part in, to play in that and also, yeah, she does. She she's also like a psychology lecturer or whatever at Brit at University of. I thought it was international relations and gender studies. Oh, okay, yeah, possibly. Uh, I think it's, it's um, gender and international politics at the University of Bristol. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. I, I think that all came out, you know. And I think it's interesting that she's she's an academic and she's written this book. Like, how skilled can you do you have to be? Um, I also find it interesting that we read a lot of debuts. Yeah. Do you, you realise that? We do. Yeah, I mean, how many other debuts have we read? 
We read Mary Claire's was a debut. Um, we are all birds of Uganda was a debut. Um, Oni's book was a debut. That's like four I've just listed. Mm, but then Chin was wasn't. Chimamanda wasn't. Jennifer wasn't. Maza wasn't. But then you're right. And then, Maza, uh, what was Maza's first book? Maza Mengiste. Yeah. I think she'd written another book. Quiz time. Sorry. Quiz, uh, quiz time. Well, let me get it out and see if it's. Well, I mean, the point is, that I feel like we're really good at giving people chances. You're right. Of, you know. Yeah. You know, also by Maza Mengiste, Beneath the Lion's Gaze. You don't know when that was printed. That could just be alongside that. Well. And so also, um, the other one, the other one, We Need New Names, that was a debut. It was your, oh, yeah, yeah, speaking of We Need New Names, I I did something recently to do with that. I did, they, they're developing a play, um, We Need New Names, so I did, uh, I was asked to do like a, 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 a workshop for like two days with the writer and director and some Zimbabwean actors and a Nigerian actress so yeah so that was that was fun to do so yeah it's a play a new place coming out it's, it's touring in spring so you know breaking news I'm allowed to say it because it's it's on it's, it's on online but I, I don't know if I'll be in it but it was fun to to, to see the characters in a different medium mm -hmm. yeah yeah and off the page bringing them to life Bringing it up to life, yeah. I was, uh, I read Bastard. I was, I played Bastard, and uh, Shag Shagazulu, who was the uh, guy that goes a bit wild and crazy. Oh bless! I don't remember Shagazulu, but you know what? I want to say I've actually been to Liberia, so it was interesting oh. to read. And what was my other connection to Liberia? The first Liberian I ever met was actually called Muna, so that was also quite interesting. Then was, was it her? It was a hmm. Was it her? No, I didn't stop it. It was based on her. No. <laughs> no, it was beautiful and dark skinned, but she wasn't slender. And I don't think oh. she was living. <laughs> but life. Okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I remember uh, an ex of mine said that Ghanaian, sorry, Ghanaian people out there, but apparently oh, Ghanaian oh. can be indecisive. I've mm -hmm. also heard this from my, I've also heard this from an auntie type. Hmm. It's like you'll be waiting for a long time if you just wait around for a Ghana boy. Yeah, apparently they can be very indecisive. And I think the way he, he, Eli Kim was really a very vivid character, but the way he was presented, like just, yeah, fit, I guess, maybe a stereotype that's been imposed on Ghanaian men. And like, I'm, I'm afraid he just couldn't, and he just kept repeating the same stuff. It was, it will work out, you know, it takes time, that kind of nonsense. He was very indecisive. For a businessman, it was so frustrating, and I—I I mean, I saw all this coming because, in in, I guess not just in Africa, but we use Africa as a uh, as an example. But the, the 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 dudes who have like you know the businesses and they have like three phones, whatever, um, and they got all this money, they travel. I, you can't expect him to just have one wife. I'm afraid. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why, why not? Because because um, because he has so much um, at his disposal. He has so he's he has so many. They always say like wealthy people um, or so called, you know, to use this silly term, but high value men. If you get with someone like that, you you are gonna have to share him with someone else. He's gonna have the wife and he's gonna have the girlfriend. I know a lot of characters talk about that. Like you be she was saying she wanted to leave or whatever but where where are you gonna find where are you gonna go and find someone who isn't gonna be in the same situation or want a similar arrangement like because he's got so much choice like literally he can trouble he can go like every he is gold i know it's the gold coast former gold coast but elikem ganyo is gold in that country um so that's where the naivety lies and it shouldn't be that that is unfortunate that it's that, but I think that the mothers and sisters and the friends were telling her, in fact, all of them except Evelyn, even Evelyn actually to a certain degree, because uh, uh, she's part of that arrangement, would say, that's just how it is. I I hear what, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I think it speaks to a bigger like societal challenge, which is around like poverty, because this was what his, that was his leverage, the money that he had. So, 
you know, that, that's why I think Evelyn took a different stance. She was like, yeah, I'm going to just go with this. I've got my businesses. I've got my brick making company. You know, she's high flying. Um, so she had, she was there. She had a choice, whereas Afi didn't because what was the alternative to be a seamstress in the village? Um, so, you know, this, this was like a big topic in Uganda 10 years ago, this idea of sugar daddies and like, there was this whole campaign that I think you were saber funding called like side dish, you know, like I've got my main, I've got my side dish, but like, it's about empowering women to have like access to finance and good jobs so that they're not making choices on partners based on like wealth and potential like lifestyles that they can't maintain themselves. Mm. You Do you think even the, those that do have access to finances find themselves in a similar situation? Because yes, Evelyn, did have a choice, but why did she choose to be okay with that arrangement? Because I think she was dating someone else as well. Like, yeah, a doctor. Yeah, but she was still kind of like doing almost similar to what Richard is doing, but she was, yeah, she was actually, she was almost waiting for his mum to die so that he can make a choice around whether he wants to be with her. But even then she was happy to be, and even though she had money and business, whatever, she still found herself in in a similar arrangement like yeah and i think it goes back to this idea of polygamy as in uh is the idea of monogamy just like a western imposition on our on many of our cultures mm. you know um you know i think that's that's one of the questions that's coming out of this mm. or and 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 is that why some so many women are accepting are they that they're accepting of it in certain cultures but actually that's just the way things are but you know, with Christianity and like Western values, mm. that's just something that we we shy away from. Yeah, because wouldn't it have been like you said earlier? Wouldn't it wouldn't it have been easier maybe if they had presented to us, saying, "Okay, you are marrying him, but also he's going to have another. Woman. The other woman is there. They they fed her the lie that she'll go one day, he'll leave her once you kind of give him what he wants and needs." But if they just presented to say, you are wife number two now, okay? I think maybe she would have been more accepting of it. Or she would have made that decision. Um, and yeah, I agree with you. Like, you know, sometimes, again, it's maybe oversharing, but there's times where, you know, I'll be thinking, yeah, could I be engaged in a polygamous relationship? But then I think that's a lot of work. That's a lot of effort. Yeah, but that's a lot of work. Polygam being part oh, of yeah. relationship. But, was, but, but maybe I'm thinking as someone who doesn't have, who's in wealthy i don't have the money but you know once uh, i become a millionaire or billionaire right um then that's a different kind of conversation because now i have access to funds and maybe access to different kind of people wanting to be a part of my life and yeah maybe that will get rid of the whole secrecy thing because then you get with you get with one with one woman right and there's that expectation like i'm the only one but if you're a millionaire and you're a billionaire and I have, I have all this money and all this time, I'm, I have I have choices for what car, and not to objectify, but a car and houses and holidays. And why wouldn't I then have also choices for other for, for other women? Why wouldn't I, every billionaire, is like every, mil, every rich person, like even broke people have more than one um, partner. So why not just enter that conversation and say, listen, you are in this relationship with me, but I'm also going to have blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think you have to become a millionaire to come to that. Like, you you know, Holly Amory, is that what they... You yeah, know, that's, really? that's, oh, that's, wait, no. that's a thing, one. And two, you know, like, in terms of Islam, in Islam, a man's allowed to have more than one wife. And I've, I've seen how some of those things work, like with family members, um, where it's done in such a dignified way. You know, each woman has her own house. It's an open arrangement. You know, when you get married, you need to seek permission because you, you, you need to inform your current wife about this potential new wife. So like, I, I'm all for kind of just exploring things and bring them into the light, more so than hiding. Yeah, and you have to treat them equal as well. And I think the problem with Ellie, he wasn't actually treating them as equal. There wasn't that equality aspect. And also again, the openness about it. And yeah, it did kind of expose both of them to, you know, dangerous thing of like just emotionally like psychologically how you know how much she was falling in love with him as Afi 
and then also she has a child they both have ch- uh, you know a child with him uh, mm-hmm. so that kind of dynamic then gets even more complicated if he's not open with them because they would expect you to be say three and a half days on one you know one house and three and a half days in the other house but if you're not doing that then that's not really falling into the kind of the the agreement and it's not making it a a, a fair a fair arrangement so if maybe if he, if he was decisive and went listen i love this moona lady she's gorgeous she's stunning that she's the mother of my first child but i also love you as well let me let let's let's in fact that house where you did the photo shoot let's have it let's get that house as well and then i we can just you know i can just go back and forth let's just build a tunnel between the houses <laughs> Yeah, and I'll just get an e-scooter and I can just like, you know, scooter through. But I don't think I don't think Afi wanted that. No, 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 she didn't. And I think the choice that she made at the end was really courageous and you know, she found her voice. It was great to see. Was it courageous though? Because now she's got a son and the son, okay, he can come see her. She doesn't stop him from coming and see him. But it's a little different to when he was staying there and he was doting on her and you know he was playing the father and the husband role but now he's not going to be there and she's a little bit she's actually in limbo she doesn't have the security that as that she, she possibly had okay he's letting her whatever use the rent and the brothers letting her rent whatever but there will come a time as we see with the mother where he might flip and say actually no nah, give me this much money for the for the rent in the mall this 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 and that. i withdraw that so she's actually is she is she is, is it is courageous in that she's doing something that's scary and dangerous but don't you think it's also putting her and also her son in a precarious situation i think it was a bit precarious but um one she was i mean if we she took we had to hope that she took evelyn's advice and got things put in her name because mm. evelyn gave her a whole lowdown on how to secure how to secure a coin and everything else so you know we just have to hope for the best and also she can get another husband can she though <laughs> this is when i keep it wouldn't be like of she can. yeah but they they said that she can but it would be tough as a mother with with a child, with well, a child. She wouldn't be the first woman to have a child and get another husband mm. she wouldn't be the first and plus she was moving in circles maybe that guy was it abraham Yeah, guy, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe Abraham, maybe Abraham will come back for her. You know, he had his eye on her. He did, he did. But then Abraham is also going to be an Ellie Kim two point oh. How do you know? Because we're in, we're in, we're in the world. We know how the world sometimes works. Because you see, with the brothers, right? Richard had a side piece. Yes, we're to believe Fred didn't, but he probably did. Um, and Ellie. Just- Columbia, this is just your piece of this is your voice coming out that you're just like whatever she you know they all have money so they're all going to be players yes are, are they not I, I don't I, I don't feel like everyone who has money is a player like I believe that monogamy and wealth can coexist but you know viewers let us know what you think can monogamy and wealth <laughs> coexist yeah yeah please do let us know I don't think I don't think it can. I'm, I'm worried to see you just blow up, man. You're just going to be like, you're just <laughs> have a whole chain. <laughs> Make it rain up. No, I mean, listen. Oh, you're going to have a harem. That's what it is. Is that what they call it? A harem. Um, no comment. No comment. Um, but yeah, okay, maybe let's leave it there. Uh, but overall, I really enjoy this book. Like, I really, really loved it. Um, so I'm excited to see her next book. She's got another book coming out, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. we should give that a read when it comes out. And I'm just excited for 2023. I think we've got one more book for, obviously, this year. Um, and then 2023. So, so, so many, I, I hope, African books coming out. Um, and I think we should hit places that we haven't been. Namibia, Angola. Nigeria. Maybe they can Because way too more of the author that that you know will comment on the back. She's librarian. Hey, let's let's read. She would be king. You know, 
let's let's travel in different places as well and also i'm gonna have my own um radio show as well on um west kent radio um fingers crossed you know so by the time this comes out maybe i would have started so and i'll be playing music from africa so the tentative title is sounds of africa um so Ooh, Kalunji, what an original title all right <laughs> yeah I can't believe, I thought for a little while, I thought you were saying something. <laughs> Shut up, you. Um, I'll call, all right. I'll, tell me a, diff, a better title. Um, it sounds a yeah. bit like Safari Colonial. Sounds of Africa, Sounds of Africa. Yeah, well, okay, I'll think of a better title, but I like Sounds of Africa because it does, it's, it, it says what it does on the tin, okay? Um, but yeah, so I'll be playing music from like each each show will be like 13 to 15 songs, but we'll be traveling, say, from south to north, you know, so two song, three songs from south, three from west, whatever. So, and then reason I brought that up is because then I'll also be discussing the book club as well um, and trying to engage. So the target audience for the radio station is 40 plus. So maybe you'll be able to get some sophisticated older readers. To add. If you're not sophisticated, don't don't listen, okay? Don't listen in if you're not sophisticated. Yeah, yeah only sophisticated people, please. That uh, sounds exciting, Kalunji. Yeah, yeah, it should be, it should be. What, what you, what's your big plan for 2023? Well, I mean, before we talk about big plans, I think it's really important to shout out, like, all the people that came to, to our event last month. Thank you so much for coming to our first face-to-face -face event, um, African Page Turners, and to our host, Second Home and to our sponsors, African Originals, Pearl to Coast, and have I missed out anybody else? Uh, Kenson Chelsea, of course. Yeah, Mrs. Wordsmith as well. Um, and One World Publication who gifted us this, this book, uh, along with a lot of other books that they've gifted us. So yeah, big thank you to One World Publications who are going in with um, the kind of African titles. So yeah, thank you so much, the lovely people over there. Um, please do keep gifting us stuff as well. And if you are interested in sponsoring us or supporting us in any way, do get in touch. Um, you can find us on the Nile Book Club on Instagram and Nile Book Club on on Twitter. Yeah, and we're going to put the handles, uh, we're going to put the websites of the people who just shouted out below. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, brilliant. Um, do I... Okay, let's stop recording. Um, Chicken, did you budget tunda? All on day, the one that fits you.